Hey everybody, Mr. Polymers here. I wanted to take some time to review how I change motors in my two HHC uh, quadcopters. Uh, let's look at this one first. This is uh, this would be the uh, the newer HHC I purchased. Uh, now what I'm doing on this one here, I'm just doing a, what I call conventional motor change. Now would like to stress that there is no need to take this upper shell off in all these blades. Number one, it would be ridiculous. And number two, each of these arms has seven has seven screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What I do on both my quads, I remove these two on each motor arm. So that leaves us with five. Uh, what you need to do if you have your skids is remove the skid take those five off and just prop this up and remove the motor mount. Now here's the uh, HHC motor here. As you can see what, what I do, I splice. These are the wires from the main board. I splice them here about an inch or so from the motor and I go and solder. I solder the two wires together. Use a decent soldering iron. This one here is actually temperature controlled. So it works much better than those cheap stick uh, solder irons you get at uh, Harbor Freight, Home Depot. You know what I'm talking about. So these are very good. But anyway, what I do, I just solder that on. I use liquid tape because these wires are fairly small and I, I really can't find any shrink. You know, I have a supply of shrink tubing. The shrink tubing is just too large for these small wires. So what I do, once I solder this, I go ahead and take open this up and again I did this yesterday but I had to reshoot the video and I take a uh, I just take a q-tip get a little bit of that uh, liquid tape and I just uh, once these are soldered I just go ahead and place the liquid tape on the wires and let that dry so uh, again that uh, finishes this motor now to um, you may see that this has a black and a white wire, yet the motor has a blue and red wire. Well, really, you can use either motor on any arm. You know, the uh, obviously the red and black have one spin direction, and the white and black, or excuse me, the red and blue have one direction, the black and white have another. Well, if you just reverse the wires you can change the direction of, of the uh, the spin of the pinion here you know oftentimes you may be down to one motor let's say for example all I had was this motor with the red and blue so you just you just uh, switch the uh, wires now normally on these motors uh, the black wire and the blue wire is like the negative the white and the red are the positive at least they are when you use a multimeter on the main board. And I'll show you a uh, I'll show a picture of the main board when I was replacing it here. But anyway, you can kind of look at it that way. So if you're using different colors, you just switch them again: red, red to black, blue to white, and that'll give you that'll change the rotation that you need. Also, another way to check these motors is all these arms have a spin. For example, this motor this would be the right front as a clockwise rotation or excuse me counterclockwise rotation so to test the motor once you have that you just turn the quad on and uh, I won't do it here but turn the quad on and you want to make sure this pinion is going the opposite way so if this is counterclockwise you want to make sure this pinion is going clockwise that will turn the motor or the excuse me the blade counterclockwise so fairly straightforward takes maybe, you know, 10 minutes at most. You know, I've done this a few, you actually get to learn to do this a number of times on these quads. I'll get into that in a little bit. So we'll put this aside again. That's kind of my suggestion on someone who doesn't want to get too involved or wants a quick way to change your motor. Now, to bring our attention to this quad. This is my, uh, this is my original quad. And I'll place a picture. This is the one I lost the main board, and I replaced the main board. But what I did on this quad when I was doing that, I placed micro connectors here. 
In fact, you can buy these on eBay, Banggood, whatever. I, don't, I forget where I purchased them, but just do a. They're just called a micro connector. You know, they have a, you know, male and female part to them. You know, I put the female, the larger plug, on the board, uh, and then ran, ran the wire up. It's, it's, it comes to here, and then what I, what I have been doing, is I have been using, taking uh, the new motors cutting the wires and then just uh, again uh, soldering this micro they call a micro connector on the motor now why do I do this well if I'm out in the field flying I, I necessarily just can't if I want to fly some more I may not be able to run home and use my soldering iron so this enables me to change motors out in the field fairly quickly again I just have the five screws to take out this quad here I am not running my skids this is gonna be my racing quad here so uh, you know I might try to do some video of it placing the uh, keychain camera on it but I'm gonna to have to catch it or maybe land it in a uh, you know a big a big beach towel because that camera's exposed but without the skids it does perform it's faster it's about as light as you're going to get it. So anyway, th these are my... Uh, they're a little bit of work putting these connectors on, but uh, once you've done it, uh, it just makes it simpler. Again, if you're, say you're outside, you're away from home, and you lose a motor, which for me, I average losing a motor every 14 minutes. Now, I just received four motors yesterday. This is my last one. I had to replace a motor on this one. Excuse me, I had to replace one motor on this one. I lost two motors on this. So now I'm not saying I lost them yesterday, but I had to replace one. I flew it briefly yesterday and I lost another motor. So I think it may be maybe this one here. So I thought uh, I thought my V262 with these N50 motors. I thought this was a motor eater. Now let me show you the. These are the infamous V262 motors. Same motor that there's a few of you looking at the tarantula. It has this motor. Uh, this will burn out too. However, I've had a lot of luck using this product called Ideal. It's an electronic switch and contact cleaner. What I do on these new V262 uh, motors is, you know, you put the motor in, you run it up at low RPM for a few minutes. Go ahead and spray in that small hole where the brushes are. And then run it again for just a minute or two. You don't have to do it too long. Do that every three or four flights. Uh, my experience has been I've uh, extended the life uh, tremendously so far. In fact, I make a note when I replace the motor on the V262. The last time I replaced the motor on this was uh, December, looks like December 24th, the day before Christmas. Now I don't fly this every day all the time, but so far uh, this has been doing well with this cleaner. Unfortunately, I don't know of any way to put the cleaner, or really, with these little cordless motors, I, I don't see any way to place a contact cleaner in them. So. Uh, that's the biggest downfall on this, on these quads. And to be quite honest with you, I know a lot of you are watching my channel. There's a big interest in these because they're they're inexpensive. Well, there's a there's a reason why they're inexpensive. To me, it becomes a hassle to place to continue to replace motors. I mean, this by far takes first prize on crapping out or motors crapping out. However, now I do have my smallest quad in my collection is my JXD392. Now I'm just bringing this up. This also runs a motor. This is a JXD motor. Now it's surprisingly JXD HHC. They're physically the same size, but this runs the JXD. The JXD runs on 3.7 volt system. The HHC runs on 7.4 volt. And I think that's the issue. 
7.4 volts on this motor is going to burn them out. So that, that's that's a, a design flaw in this quadcopter. When I originally purchased it, I thought uh, having 7.4 volts would give you more punch, which it does, but at the sacrifice of burning these motors out. So I have much better luck on my small JXT392 uh, with these cordless motors. I've lost three motors, but that's over probably a period of six months owning this. This is an ideal quad to learn on, by the way. For any of you getting into the hobby, I'd learn on this. I'd skip that. I mean, if you want to stay within a budget, if you want to stay within a budget, maybe go to a, a, a Tarantula, maybe, or this is the V262. Uh, better yet, the Corliss. And then when you get pretty confident, you get up to the Cherson. Again, this this is a, a, has the uh, brushless motors, but not a beginner's quad. And at almost three pounds, this could uh, do serious damage. So don't get involved with this unless you can fly. So anyway, uh, just wanted to kind of go over what I'm doing with my uh, two HHCs. I hope to have my uh, Hope to have my 3DX6 here in two weeks. Uh, that's going to be that's going to be my go-to quad, or that's that's my my plans, or my 3DX6 to be my go-to quad. It's 250 size. It's smaller than the Cherson, yet it has GPS capability. It has real headless mode, not this crappy stuff you see in these toy grade quads, and. Uh, uh, it's fun to fly, it's fast, and you don't have to worry about these motors burning out. So, anyway, uh, Mr. Polymers, uh, our weather's warming up, but it's not really indicative of flying right now. So, uh, hope to catch you guys soon. We, uh, I should be hopefully out in our my North Canton Radio Control Control Club field. I'll be flying mainly. I'll be flying the 3DX6. I may take the uh, here. Let me let me show you something on this. Uh, as you see, I put extra lights on my V two six two. So these are just actually the same lights under here, but I ran them on the circuit board to give me more light. In fact, this was the quad I used in my uh, nighttime flight video on my channel. Hopefully, you guys are watching my videos. What I also have on the V262 is a, uh, this is a low voltage alarm, so this will alarm even before the lights come on, so this gives you a lot of advanced warning, especially I fly this pretty high, you don't want this going to low voltage because you'll lose it somewhere on a roof or in the woods, so it's important to have low voltage alarms. When you get in any decent sized quad, even my Cherson has a low voltage alarm. It has one internally. It's not overly loud. Not not sure what happened. Could have, could have been due to one of the crashes. But uh, I use a low voltage alarm on the chair. So you can never have too many alarms on these quads. So uh, you just use. You do have to have a, a battery with a balanced plug. So you can only have an alarm that I'm aware of on a uh, two cell or larger battery. And this will indicate, uh, for example, this is running 8.24 volts, 414, and 410 on each cell. So, then when this I have this set to about 3.4 volts, it'll start alarming off. So, anyway, Mr. Polymers, uh, I hope I've helped some of you out with these quads. Again, I'm just uh, I'd kind of stay away from this. Again, a toy grade quad at 7.4 volts, I'd stay away from them. Save your money, get into a cordless. I will be building a, a ZMR or 250 class quad here uh, in the next few months. So uh, take care, and we'll see you guys out on either around the house flying or out in the field.